Many people see a conflict between science and the Christian faith. They would argue that the latest advances in science make belief in God unreasonable, uh, render the Bible unbelievable. Uh, but is this really the case? And I'm joined today by Dr. Russ Carlson. Thank you, Russ, for being here. You're a biochemist and you are a Christian. And you've had a, a rather storied career as a, as a biochemist. Uh, you've been um, at the Complex Carbohydrate Research right. Center at the University of Georgia. You were the uh, executive technical director of analytical services. Yes. You were at the center since 1988, so you've been there some time. Mm -hmm. uh, you have over 180 publications in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. You have four patents. You've been a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology. So you've had the opportunity uh, to discover some new things that nobody's ever known about, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly with regard to how bacterial cells interact with host cells. Uh, what is it like uh, as a biochemist to discover something new that nobody's ever known before? Wow, uh, well, it, it's, all, it's, it's always a, a thrill, you know, when you find out something. I, I think sometimes people who are not scientists, they, th they think of the big discoveries like penicillin or uh, mm -hmm. the structure of DNA or some, uh, you know, uh, a polio vaccine, for example, those kinds of things. And certainly those are great and thrilling discoveries. Uh, but for for day-to-day -day research, uh, what was always amazing to me is that almost every day w we are able to see something, uh, or at least every week sometimes, see something a uh, new structure or uh, a new explanation, uh, the data support a new explanation that no one has ever seen before. And it's just, uh, it's just, it's just really uh, a thrilling experience for me. When I was young in elementary school, I enjoyed math a lot. Uh, I also enjoyed sports, but in school I enjoyed math. And it was always exciting to be able to solve problems. And uh, that, uh, that continued throughout my life, the, the thrill of being able to solve uh, a problem. And, and uh, w you know, during pursuing a, a scientific career, uh, this just led from, you know, math to chemistry to, to biochemistry. It led from uh, high school to college to graduate school. Uh, and ultimately, uh, by just pursuing what I like to do, uh, that, that thrill of solving kind of problems, I ended up, uh, well, I ended up talking to you here today <laughs> because of that. So, uh, so that's what it was. But um, as a Christian, uh, you know, uh, we believe that uh, God is the author and the creator of the universe and, and, uh, and that uh, his spoken word, nature, is also his his word, just as his written word is. And so it's thrilling when you understand how something works in nature, uh, what an awesome uh, creator he, he really is. So there's a special, uh, uh, a special feeling when it comes. I would describe it as a feeling of joy that it comes uh, as a Christian to, to see something new uh, in nature that God has made. Uh, I, again, there's a, there's a statement I was just thinking of that came to my mind by Francis Collins, who's currently the director of the National Institutes of Health, and he describes those moments of discovery as a Christian uh, as being uh, really a moment of worship, you know. It's just a, a, it's a moment of praise and worship uh, to the Creator. Now, um, do you think it's unusual or odd that as human beings we even have the capacity to understand uh, the universe that we live in and, and to make sense of how life operates? Well, I think that uh, uh, it, if you look at, if you divorce the idea of, Christi of Christianity uh, from, from this question, it would be odd. You know, uh, uh, Paul Davies, an astrobiologist at the Arizona State University, has said all, all, all scientists operate under the assumption that the universe is rational and intelligible uh, by us. And uh, if, it, if, if we didn't think that, w there would be no reason to investigate it at all. And so we operate under that assumption. Uh, and uh, so, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. There is no reason that it had to, had to be that way. And that, that's a profoundly 
theological concept, and in, in my view, it's a profoundly Christian concept uh, that uh, that's biblical. That God is the author of and creator of the universe. And so, but so for a Christian, for a non-Christian, it's extremely odd, you know. For a Christian, maybe it's not so odd because it fits in with what we've learned about God and who He is in the Bible and that we were created in His image, that we also have consciousness and we have uh, the capacity for abstract thought and for reason uh, to be able to understand His, uh, his book of nature as well as His written word. Uh, we, we have the ability to, to comprehend and understand and He wants us to understand those two books, to know him better and appreciate him better and, and uh, have greater joy in our lives.